I woke up today and saw the sky was so bloomy and the air was so chilly. It was so comforting and it put me in such a good mood. I did not want to get out of bed at all and I didn't until late afternoon. I turned on my fairy lights, beautiful piano music and I was in bed reading my cozy books and fantasizing about life. It felt magical. I might be exaggerating, but it felt that way to me. However, I realized it wasn't the start of the winter but it had actually rained last night and that's why the weather was so gloomy. I I was little worried about my plants though because they needed sunlight but I hope they'll be fine. I deeply enjoyed reading the cozy book in my bed and I thought I'd read you one of the fantasy stories. It's called Cecile's Diaries from Stories of Vampires. Cecile's Diary, England, 1820, Saturday. I can hardly wait. Today is my very first ball. But last night, did I dream of balls, ball gowns and glittering chandeliers? Oh no, my dreams were far less pleasant. I dreamed that my window was open and the wind was howling through. A low voice whispered, let me in, Cecile. Invite me in. I heard myself say, come in. And a dark shape flew in through the window, like a black sheet flapping in the wind. A moment later, a tall man in a long black cloak was in my room. His hair was jet black and his face was very white. He leaned forward as though for a kiss, but I saw a glimpse of pointed teeth, never about to sink into my neck. As I awoke, my hand went to my neck. Of course, there was nothing there, but I've never had such a vivid dream. My sisters, my parents and I cramped into the coach headed for the ball. But I wasn't very cheerful as my new bodice was laced up so tight that breathing was a challenge. I wondered how on earth I was going to dance in my stiff dress and if there'd be anyone worth dancing with. I doubted it, not in boring old little kidding. I wished I lived somewhere more exciting where I'd meet dashing officers or brave sailors or daring explorers and be whisked away to exotic faraway places. The young gentlemen around here are about as exciting a school toast. But perhaps my luck was changing. I hear someone's taken cringe manner, said my middle sister Charlotte to my eldest sister Lizzie. Apparently he's a handsome young gentleman, though I've not seen him yet myself. My heart began to beat a little faster at the mention of this mysterious person. When we arrived at the dance, the party was already in full swing. A small band was playing a jaunty tune and on one side of the room there was a large table groaning with food and drink. I was starving so I started off in the direction of the refreshments. Suddenly, among the dancing couples and the meaning guests, I saw a face I recognized and I could not help it. I let it out a loud, unladylike gasp. It was the pale stranger from a dream. The next second, he was beside me. May I have the pleasure of this dance? I stared at him, unable to speak. He smiled and offered his hand to me, gazing into my eyes. Feeling dazed, I took his hand in mine. It was deathly cold. I soon discovered he was an excellent dancer. I'm used to taking dance lessons with boys who think it's funny to step on your toes, but we seemed to glide around the room, almost floating. Who are you? I asked, partly because I wanted to know, but also so he'd open his mouth and I could look at his teeth. He didn't reply but instead whirled me faster and faster around the dance floor until I was panting for air. He didn't seem to breathe faster. In fact, I couldn't hear him breathing at all. As the song ended, my partner bowed and seemed to melt away into the crowd. Sunday. The ball seems like just another dream today. I went to church as normal, took a walk in the fields, rode on pebbles and took tea with my sisters at our cousin's house nearby. But everywhere I went, I looked for the pale young man. If he leaves at the manor, surely I'll see him soon. Wednesday. No sign of him anywhere in town or out of it. Perhaps he'll be at Friday's ball. Friday night, as I arrived at the ball, I saw him immediately. A pale young man was waiting for me on the dance floor. I felt drawn towards him, like a wind-up toy, unable to control my own feet. You came back to me, my love, he said, as if it were the most normal way in the world to open a conversation. He took my hand and twirled me around the room. I felt as though I were in a trance. As the tune finished, I couldn't say whether it lasted minutes or hours. My partner looked at me with his deep, dark eyes. Come into the garden, he said. I tried to clear my head. It felt as though part of me, the sensible part, was asleep.
asleep. Only if you tell me who you are, I managed to say, please tell me. Come, he said, and I'll show you. Moments later, we were on the moonlit terrace view on the ballroom. The man's strange, beautiful face was close to mine. His strange, beautiful, pale face that I had never seen in daylight, with its sharp, sharp teeth and his chest that never rose and fell to breathe. The music in doors stopped abruptly and I was suddenly very awake. The thought that had been bubbling under the surface rose up and my heart jumped in fear as I realized, you are a vampire. His face stretched into a snarl like an animal, no longer handsome. With a terrible hiss, he lunged at me. I ducked and ran as fast as I had ever run. Safe inside the crowded ballroom, I turned. The vampire was nowhere to be seen. I took a seat close to the buffet and watched and waited. To calm myself, I took a plate of food and began to pick at it. Just then, I heard a voice at my elbow. You cannot escape so easily my love. The vampire was standing beside me. I jerked to my feet, spilling my plate of rich garlicky French stew everywhere. To my surprise, the vampire leaped back. Garlic, he hissed, then turned and fled. As I stared after him, I had an idea. There were wild garlic flowers growing near to my house. As soon as I get home, I thought, I'll put vases of them everywhere. I felt much better after thinking of that. I spent the rest of the ball dancing with a very plain boy named Tom. He had red freckled cheeks. He breathed nosily through his mouth and he stepped on my feet too. That night, I thought he was the best dance partner a girl could want.